So I'm here at the Challenge Roth transition area and as you can see, it is packed full of thousands of bikes. So I'm keen to get in there and see all sorts of different tech that might be in those racks. So I'm gonna go and have a look. Right, so two bikes here right beside each other that have really caught my eye on transition area for different reasons. This one here, the Principia, is one of the first ever bikes that I had, a Principia model. Danish brand that you really don't see anymore because they're really long since gone, but this one here has his name on it and it's Martin he has written on his top view. Martin must be pretty local because there's a sticker here from his bike shop, which is Hippelstein, which is just down the road from transition area. So I hope he has a good day. Probably done Challenge Roth a few times being a local. And then here to my left, we've got absolutely tiny bike, brand new model, Canyon that's an extra small, love this paint job, it's a Rafa edition paint job. So here we have old and the new, disc brakes, 11 speed DI2, so love having these two bikes side by side. So since I'm at a legendary German race here at Challenge Roth, it would be rude not to talk about this bike that I've just spotted, which harks back to the days of another German legend, Ironman athlete, Norman Stadler. He won Ironman Hawaii twice aboard a Kota Caliber, and it's a frame set that you don't see too often, so it's quite nice to see this one still sitting here. A few years old, but still a cracking TT bike. Got some Zentis wheels on here that, again, you don't see very often, so I'm glad I spotted this one. Now, I've maybe just not been around the sport long enough, but this is a set of pedals I haven't ever clapped eyes upon before. Vista Magic X is what's written on them, so maybe you guys can help me out. So you see all sorts of storage facilities on bikes in a transition area like this. You see brand new and you see, well, not so brand new. Now, this one here, I must say caught my eye because it's quite enormous. I have no idea what's getting stored in here because there's a clear top to it, which I presume might be for a phone to sit on top so you can see through that. But then underneath that, there's all sorts of other stuff stuffed in there. I think there's spares, it could be food, but I think there's even the kitchen sink inside that one. So it wasn't just that Kota Caliber that Norman Stadler rode out in Hawaii to winning effect. He also then went on to ride this Kota Queen K, which they designed as a newer model to replace that one. And he also used on the Big Island, named after that very famous highway that is stretching out to Havi on the bike course in Hawaii. So rather nice to see these two bikes in here. Look what I've found now, this bike got to be older than me, or well, I think it is anyway. This is a Cinelli steel frame. What a beauty it is, in immaculate condition. But it's got seven speed gears. I mean, that is proper old school. And then up here on the top, we've got some down tube shifters as well, which is just something you never see anymore in a transition area. <laughs> Now this is a German brand that I don't see very often anymore. It's a specialist brand, I guess you could say, the Kakuma, and it's this colorway that caught my eye, as you can imagine. This orange and green certainly stands out amongst all the more regular frames, shall we say. But another aspect of this athlete's bike, which is quite interesting, you don't see it so often, but it's a really good idea, is a little reminder, or resuming, I suppose, of their energy strategy for the day ahead, when to take gels, when to take on water, and even right through to how long they think it's gonna take them to do the ride. Well, this is a rather unique bike indeed because this is one of the very new bikes given to the athletes luckily enough to be a part of the Zwift Tri Academy. And this is British athlete Ruth Purbrook's bike ahead of the race tomorrow in Challenge Roth. I haven't seen one before. I didn't realize that they had such a funky paint job, so certainly stands out. And well, you won't be missing that one on race day. Now here's another DIY hack that was spotted here in Transition Air in the back of this specialized shift. Very clever 3D printed storage that's been put in here. Also acts as a bit of a fairing too on the back of the down tube. There's a flap on the other side to get into it, I presume, because I'm not gonna try to get a few bits and pieces stored in there. But cleverest part of this that I can see is that there's a light integrated into the design. So they're gonna stay nice and safe out on the roads. So a simple old school hack we've got here is some cereal bars, two of them literally masking taped onto the top tube. Nothing wrong with it at all. Probably be easier to stick them in a back pocket of a jersey, to be honest. And I do hope that they've got a little bit more food than this for a race day, because it's a long old day tomorrow. Now it's not just cereal bars that can be taped to the top tube, because here we've got some gels taped on as well. Now, each one of these is taped on individually at the top of the gel, which makes perfect sense because you could just rip it off as you want each one. But the problem that I'm seeing here is you could grab that gel to rip it off and then squeeze it and then you can see what's gonna happen. Potentially gel everywhere over the bike, over the hands. So I hope they've had a wee practice of this before tomorrow.
Now Cube TT bikes, if I'm honest, are not ones that I'd seen an awful lot of in transition areas, but here in Germany they seem to be rather popular. This brand new top of the line Arium SLT has definitely caught my eye because this colorway is rather stunning if you ask me. So I just spotted this wheel here, which is a set of lightweights, but very old lightweights, or I think they're pretty old. Certainly never seen them with the German spelling of the branding on the rim. That uh, was what caught my eye, if I'm honest. Normally you're just used to seeing the usual lightweight as it's written in more modern wheels. And I hope that this person gets through their ride tomorrow in one piece because this is a pretty worn looking tubular glued to this front wheel. Hope it's gonna last. So this giant live here in the racks caught my eyes as I walked by because it's got a nice bright paint job and you guys know me with paint on bikes. But moreover, I just thought it was a good opportunity to talk about the race number and number belt that Laura, or Laura is the German pronunciation I guess would be, has got her number attached to her base bars because it's just one less thing to worry about in race morning. You don't see it on many of the other bikes but it just means it's there, it's obvious and you can just step into it before you get on your bike to leave. So you don't see this very often, but somebody here has got an entire collection of their race venues that they've been to, I guess, all over the bike. We've got Frankfurt, Taiwan, Malaysia, Korea. We've even got Lake Placid, Santa Rosa, Texas, Florida, an entire trip around the globe, it seems. Well, this is one way to make sure you can spot your bike in transition area. Just go for the full on Project One custom colorway. You guys know me, absolutely love the speed concept and the colors that Trek can do. So here is another beautiful example of that. Now this parlay here has made me stop and have a look, not just because of the paint job, the blue and the grey, quite nice, it stands out, but it's these fairings for the discs that I haven't really spotted before. I didn't know that they had those on the parlay bike, so that's a little bit different. Now you get all sorts of storage options on bikes these days, and I've definitely not spotted this before, because as far as I can tell, it's a custom 3D printed box to slot right into this gap that sits down between the seat tube and the down tube, just snugged up against the water bottle cage as well, so perfect fit. Now forget custom paint jobs on the frames, we've got a custom paint job to take a look at here on this helmet. This is Pedro's helmet, and while he thinks he's Iron Man by the looks of it, I don't think any told him he was at a challenge race. Now I don't know about you, but I do not fancy spending 180 Ks riding on this thing. That is a full carbon cell Italia saddle, so they're a braver person than me. Here is a set of wheels I haven't seen in a long time, probably in fact since I was flicking through the magazines when I first started racing triathlon, because these Kodama wheels that I've got behind me really hark back to quite some time ago. Fantastic wheels, just been around a long time. We've got the four spoke on the front and the Carboni disc on the back. Now I find this quite interesting, well the geek in me does, because this here is a Cube Arium SLT, this here is a Cube Arium SLT, this one is as it should look with all the usual branding and colorways on the frame set, but the owner of this bike for whatever reason, and very unusual to see in the age group ranks, has meticulously taped up everything, and I mean I mean everything that could make it look like a Cube. Very well done in terms of the taping, but I'd be fascinated to know what they have against Cube. Well, it's always fascinating to take a wander through the transitionary racks in a big race like Challenge Roth. We've got over 4,000 bikes in these fields here, ready to go tomorrow. And refreshingly, we're seeing a whole spectrum yet again of the very old to the absolute cutting edge. So hopefully you've enjoyed this small peek inside this transition area. Please hit that thumb up like button if that's the case. Find the globe on screen to get all the other videos on the channel. If you want to see the age group transition tour we did at Oceanside, you can find that here. And if you want to see the Challenge Roth tour from last year, you can find that here.